morning. Welcome back to the lesson, the last lesson by Anthony Jody. So, first some questions. My first question is, what did Franz see through the window? So the answer is, Franz saw through the window that all his classmates were in their places and his class teacher M. Hamel was walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler under his arm. My second question is, why was Franz not punished for his being late? Though Franz was very late, he was afraid of being punished, but he was not punished because M. Hamel was very sad that day. He was emotional, sentimental, because that was the last day in that school. Because that day he had to deliver his last lesson. So he wanted to impart all the knowledge which he had to the students. That's why he didn't punish him. Question number three. Who are the persons except the students and the teacher present in the class? In the class, except the students and M. Hamel, some more persons were present. Some villagers were present. M. Ong are mentioned here and these are the former mayor, the former postmaster and old houses. Now, let's see the text. What a clap! these words were to me. Oh, the wretches, that was what they had put up at the town hall. The words told by M. Hamel were so shocking to me, so surprising to me, and then I could follow that these were the unfortunate things on the bulletin board. Rich, W-R-E-T-C-S, rich. Rich means unfortunate thing, unfortunate event, unfortunate person. My first friend's lesson. Why? I hardly knew how to die. I should never learn anymore. I must stop there. Then. That was my last lesson. He thought, Franz thought, that that was his last lesson. But till now, he hadn't learned a single word to write and read. And that day, he had to stop learning. Now, he couldn't learn anymore. Oh, how sorry I was for not learning my lesson, for seeking birds' eggs or going sliding on the sun. My books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago, so heavy to carry, my grammar and my history of the sands were old fans now that I couldn't give up. Now he was regretting that how he had wasted his time, how instead of studying he was roaming here and there in seeking the bird's eggs, s w t -E seek, seek means search, seek, search, search. So he used to seek bird's eggs. He used to slide in the river Shah. Shah is the name of a river. There. He used to swim in the river when the classes were going on. So today he was regretting that how he wasted his time and he didn't devote his time to study. The same books which sometimes before were nuisance for him. Nuisance means a source of irritation. Same books he hated some time before. Now were old fans for him. As we part from our old fans and the moment is heartbreaking for us. In the same way, the books of history, drama were old fans for him. And he didn't want to give up. He didn't want to leave those books. And M. Hamel, too, the idea that he was 
bring away that I should never see him again. Maybe you thought it all about his ruler and how cranky he was. M. Hammer, the very cruel teacher, the very strict teacher, who was always strict to me. I hated him most, but the same teacher was so respectful to me. I had love for him. I had regard for him. When I thought that he would go away, he would leave the school. Uh, I was feeling very bad to think about all that. I had forget, forgotten all the things. I had forgotten how he used to beat me. I had forgotten how he used to scold me. I only and only thought that he would go. He would leave her. Now he would not deliver any lesson. I had also forgotten that he was cranky. Cranky, a short temper, whimsical, irritable. He was irritable, somewhat stern. But I have forgiven him for all these things. Poor man! It was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine Sunday clothes. And now I understood why the old man of the village was sitting there in the back of the room. Oh, poor man. Here, the poor man was, have come for M. Hamlet. He feels sorry for you. Now he understands that why he had put on, why M. Hamel had put on his Sunday clothes. Children's Sunday clothes means our newest clothes, our finest clothes, which we save for Sunday or for Sunday any special day. So now you could understand that why M. Hamel had put on his Sunday clothes. How he was in that presentable outfit. And he also understood that how the old man, how the old villagers were also sitting on the bench and listening to his lecture. It was because they were so too that they are not going to school more. Actually, those old persons sitting on the last bench, like uh, old Hauser, like the mayor, like the postmaster, they all were feeling sorry. First, because during their childhood, they couldn't learn. Friends, their own mother tongue, their own native language. And secondly, it was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more. And secondly, they were feeling sorry because their master, their teacher, their fellow teacher who had passed 40 years teaching their children was leaving the school. So it was their tribute, respect, regard for that teacher, for Mr. Hamel. While I was thinking of all this, I heard my name called. It was my turn to decide. While I was lost in my thought, in my deep thought, at the same time, my name was being called. Now it was my turn to decide the rules of participles. What would I not have given to be able to say that dreadful rule for the parts fall all through, very loud and clear and without one mistake? That day, I wanted to recite the rules of parts falls without a single mistake. In one go, loudly, clearly, but alas, I got mixed up on the first words and I stood there holding on to my desk my heart beating and not daring to look up. Not a single word I could read. I got mixed up. I got confused. So, feeling embarrassed, feeling ashamed, I kept on standing. I didn't have no, I didn't have courage to look up to face my teacher. I heard 
M. Hammer said to me, I won't scold you, little Sam. You must feel bad enough. See how it is. Every day we have said to ourselves, Wow, I have plenty of time. I'll learn it tomorrow. And now you see, see how we have come out. M. Hamel didn't scold him. M. Hamel told him, Sam, I am not going to scold you. Because you are already feeling bad. But just see how it happened. It is a tendency of human beings, particularly the tendency of students, that they delay anything, they postpone anything. They think that they will learn it tomorrow, next day. But slowly, slowly, time passes away and the things go out of the hands. Things go beyond their capacity and the same thing happens there. Uh, friends didn't learn the language friends and slowly slowly the last day came and he was feeling embarrassed. So M. Hamel told him that just see how it happened. Ah, that's the great trouble with Aljaz. She puts off learning till tomorrow. He told that this is the root cause of trouble for Aljaz, for whole Aljaz, for the people of Aljaz. This is the root cause of defeat of Aljaz because the people of Aljaz had no regard, had no respect for their mother tongue. And so they had to face the defeat because the people of Aljaz had tendency to put out the things for tomorrow, to delay the things for tomorrow. Now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you, how is it you pretend to be Frenchmen and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language. Children see here. Now those fellows, who are those fellows? About whom the writer is talking? Those fellows means the Prussians, the people of Prussia. Now they had right to say. Now they could mock at them, mock at the Frenchmen that, hey, you have no right to call yourself Frenchmen. Why? Because you cannot speak your own mother tongue. So you have no right. Nobody has given you right. That you can call yourself, you are Frenchman. And yet, you can neither speak nor write your own language. But you are not the worst. For a little Franz, we all have a great deal to reproach ourselves with. But Franz, you are not only the fellow who should be blamed. You are not only the person who should be responsible. You are not only the person to be condemned. We all the people of al Josh are to be blamed, are to be accused, are to be alleged for not learning French, our own mother tongue. Your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn. They prefer to put you to work on a farm or at the mills so as to have a little more money. Your parents, your parents are also to be blamed. They are also responsible because they never cared. They never forced you. They never suggested you that you should attend your classes. They prefer, they like that you should work in the field. You should work in the factory so that you could learn, a, you could earn a little. So, it's not only it's not only fault, it's the fault of your parents also because they also never made you learn the French. Children, here just see the use of prefer. Prefer means like more. And after prefer, 
we use preposition to but after like we don't use any preposition when it is for i like mango i like coffee but the word paper is used when we compare two things like i prefer coffee to tea so here just see they prefer to put you work to work on farm or at the mills and i i have been to blame also i am not often sent you to water my flowers instead of learning your lessons and then i wanted to go fishing did i not just give you a holiday hamel told that he was himself to be blamed also he was himself also to be alleged because sometimes he too didn't take their classes he gave them holiday because he himself went fishing and sometimes he engaged the students for his own domestic work like water the plants children water water is here work to water the plants means to irrigate the plants to give water to the plants so he says that he is to be blamed also he is to be condemned also because he was also not so much serious about his own profession own work then from one thing to another m hamel went on to talk of the french language now he started teaching the language french and he told almost every topic first one topic then just another topic saying that it was the most beautiful language in the world the clearest the most logical that he must guard it among us and never forget it he appreciated this language he told the features of this language characteristic of this language he told that french is the language which is the most beautiful language in the world he told about french that french is the clearest language in the world he told about french that it is the most logical language so he inspired by saying this he inspired all the villagers all the students that they must guard their language they must protect their language they must save their language because when a people are enslaved people children p o p l e people but over a is used article a is used before it because people means here members of a particular nation members of a particular community because when a people are enslaved enslaved is war means made slave as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they are the key to their freedom means even the people are enslaved but they have regard for their language they have saved their language then their language can make them once again independent can make them once again free because language is the key to the prison so children now come back to the word meaning means thunder clap means sharp crash of thunder and a shocking surprise here in this lesson the second meaning will be applicable the next is erich uh which i have already discussed a miserable person an unfortunate person a miserable thing an unfortunate thing or event then it is cranky means whimsical impulsive then sunday clothes the best or newest clothes saved for sundays and a special occasion then reproach a mild review disgrace criticism put off delay 
postpone then twine when wow then to twist together and twined it is adjective tangled entangled these are the words now some grammar parts the sentence is the new master comes tomorrow this sentence is in simple present but it has been used to show simple future to express future scheduled events and time tables we use simple present example my flight leaves at 3 pm you can see here that the sentence is in simple present but it shows the time table future time table now the second sentence is it may me forget all this sentence is called causative sentence causative sentence is a sentence in which we use some causative verbs like make let get uh some examples uh first uh, with make he made me laugh in the same way you can use uh he made me play i make him dance she makes me write then she let let means allow i will not let you do this work he let me go all the verb forms of let is same let 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 but the sentence with allow is he allowed me to go after allow we used to but just see here i will not let you do this work after let we don't use to then get he will get his hair cut in the same way i shall get my clothes washed i shall get my wall painted so these are some grammar parts now i am going to end this session with some questions so first question is how did fans feel to know that that was the last french lesson of m hamet truly fans felt sad fans felt sorry to know that that was the last lesson last day of m hamet in fact he was regretting because by then he hadn't learned to read or write a single word of french second question is what is the tendency of the student generally about learning anything generally the students delay anything for tomorrow put off anything for tomorrow they think that they have plenty of time and this way they waste their time question number 3 why did m hamel blame himself m hamel blamed himself to think that he was not serious about his profession about teaching he was regretting to think that sometimes he engaged children in his own personal work so that's all thanks